Hello friends, welcome to Team <laughs> I feel like we just need to get more unhinged with the start of every Team Dog Quido video. Okay, so hey friends, how are we doing? It's time for July's Team Dog Quido. July, July! <laughs> I can't believe it. How are we all doing? Are we all excited? I'm not. Because I've got a level with you, right? I have not been doing the best at getting to TBR Cluedo books. June's TBR Cluedo, have I finished any of those books yet? I'm not sure if I have, if I'm honest with you. I wish that I could just disappear. I feel like I've been trying to catch up on previous months that I haven't finished the books from, that like, it's just been this never ending cycle. And I've decided that today, that all ends. Today, we're gonna try and build a TBR Cluedo TBR that I like actually read this month. <laughs> Cause I've had enough, it's stressing me out. It's like plaguing my soul, you know? I'm hoping TBR Cluedo will be kind this month. This month, a lot of the vlogs that I have planned, I either still don't know what I'm reading, or I can't tell you what I'm reading. So that doesn't bode well for like TV Ugly Day. So we're focusing mostly on Summerween because I'm gonna do Summerween vlogs when it's happening. And I think I'm gonna do three. So I'm gonna do one every couple of days. And we're focusing mainly on what I'm gonna be reading during Summerween and like, fingers crossed I get to all of these in Summerween. I actually, I haven't like sat down. In this first Summerween vlog, I'm gonna sit down and like make my TBR. So I haven't even really looked at the prompts other than I think one is like read a thriller, which I know what I'm reading for that. Maybe we've, maybe we've, maybe we've got that into the TBR this month, I don't know. But yeah, I actually don't know what the prompts are, but I do know, but I've like forgotten them because I want to do it with you in the vlog. So we could be selecting books here that I want to read that don't even fit any prompts. So, you know, <laughs> what's a girl to do? Anyways. Shall we just get into the first TBR Cluedo roll? Okay, time for roll number one. Person number six, which is yellow over here in Thriller. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a one and a four. We'll just go number one. That is number 27, which is a book rated three stars on Goodreads. Roll one was a thriller that is rated three stars on Goodreads. This is any book that's rated three point something on Goodreads. And guess what I've gone with, guys? The writing retreat. <laughs> I've spoken about this a ton lately. It was in my summer TBR. It's in my most recent five star predictions. I believe this is gonna be five stars, despite the fact that it's rated, I think a 3.46 on Goodreads at the moment. Everyone who I have similar reading taste to, every booktuber who I have similar reading taste to has et this up. So frankly, the girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. Like I don't make the rules. It just seems to be the way it is. It's the truth. So like, you know, I'm gonna love it. <laughs> I'm gonna love it, I'm gonna love it. So this is a book that I'm definitely wanting to get to during Summerween. I'm really, really excited for this. This might be like the first book that I read in Summerween. I just know we've got this writing retreat that this author is holding for like other prospective authors. I think there's some like female friendships going on and stuff like that. But then things start to become unhinged and I'm just so excited to find out the level of unhinged. Like I, I can't wait. You guys don't get it. You guys don't get my excitement levels. <laughs> Let me stand back a bit. I was getting a little bit up close and personal there, wasn't I? Let me, let me, let me take it back a little bit. Jesus Christ, I was getting a bit, hello. <laughs> slide to the left, slide to the right, crisscross. <laughs> I cannot explain to you how certain I am this is gonna be a five star and how excited I am to read it in Summerween and how excited I am to get to this month. I'm certain we're gonna get to this this month. So like, we're, do we're there, we're going now on the TBR, we're doing well. <laughs> Roll number two. Person number seven, which is brown up here in the mystery. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a four. I'll just go one, two and get number 16, which is a book with four or more words in the title. Roll number two was a mystery with four or more words in the title. And this is the one that I gave to my patrons to vote on. I put my fate in their hands. Well, I do this every month. Every month, <laughs> my patrons, Team Lux and Team Aurora patrons get to vote on one round of TBR Cluedo. And that ends up being a book club pick for the month. So not only are they deciding my fate, they're deciding theirs. And I feel like often they decide badly. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I'll put a book on there that I'm like, they're, cer they're certainly gonna pick that. That sounds so good. And they pick a book that's rated like 3.1 stars of Goodreads. And I'm like, I'm fighting against the tide here, guys. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. Not a joke, just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but the options that I gave them this month were all ones I was really excited to read. So we have Death on Gokuman Island by Sashi Yokomizo, 
All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, The Cat Who Caught a Killer by L.T. Shearer, and The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. And I thought this one would win. The winner was All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. This came out either, I think it came out like the end of last year in the US or maybe the start of this year in the UK. But this is Stacey Willingham's second book. She wrote A Flicker in the Dark, which I read last year, and it was a big release last year for a debut. It's already been optioned for like TV or film or something. And that one I really enjoyed. It was a solid, small town, atmospheric thriller. Atmospheric? <laughs> Atmospheric thriller. In this one, one year ago, this mother's life was changed forever. Her toddler son was taken out of his crib. And so her entire existence now revolves around trying to find her son, obsessed with finding him. Uh, she agrees to be interviewed by a true crime podcaster and his questioning brings up memories that she kind of repressed. I don't know, I'm really excited to get into another Stacey Willingham. She's becoming, well, I've read one book, but like the vibes I got from that book was that she'd be another kind of staple, reliable thriller off of me. Someone like Shari Lapina, who like, I'm not necessarily gonna give a five star, like even Shari Lapina, like maybe one five star, but I go into most of her books and I'm expecting like a four star, good time, enjoyable. And I feel like that might be what Stacey Willingham will become. This has already got really good uh, ratings on Goodreads. I'm really excited for this, excited to read the book club. If you wanna join us, the link is always down in my description of videos. If you wanna join the Patreon, we have so much on there. We have weekly reading sprints. We, we just did a quiz night together. We do movie nights. I have a podcast on there. I do exclusive videos on there. I do exclusive vlogs for the book club. There's so much on there. So if you want to join us, link's always down below. Okay, role number three. I feel like it's going quite well so far. We've got blue, person number eight. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a one and a four. We will go one, two, three, four, five. That is number 17, which is a book that is out of my comfort zone. Okay. <laughs> Role three was a romance that is out of my comfort zone. And for this, I'm going with The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith. I have to read this this month and I'm nervous, guys. I feel like the romance that I tend to read, Ali Hazelwood, Talia Hibbert, Abby Jimenez, are all within a similar vein, right? They're all like fun romances, maybe a few like serious topics in there, but like mostly fun romances, you know, where you've got the couple together for most of the book and it's like, their journey and you kind of know the plot beats that are gonna happen. This one seems a bit different. We're following Greta James who I think um, her mother has just died. She's a musician and she goes on this week long cruise to kind of like try and like heal her heart. I don't know. And then she like meets this guy and they fall in love. I don't know. It seems a bit more serious. It seems a bit more of a serious romance. And I just, I don't know if that's my thing. I feel for me too. Like I think when I read romance, I like fun. Like, woo, you know, woo. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know if this is my kind of thing. I'm kind of going into it with quite low expectations. It is out of my comfort zone. It's out of the realm of like every other romance on my romance shelves, pretty much, I feel like. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm not expecting amazing things, but we're going to get another book off the TBR is essentially the way I'm viewing this one. Roll number four. Person number four, which is pink over here in horror, okay got a three and a three. Ooh, let's go one, two, three and get the dagger. And that is, I have to do a random number generator and it picks what I read. Roll number four was the dagger, which I feel like I haven't done a lot, right? Cause I'm scared of it. <laughs> but the dagger, the dagger, the dagger prompt, the dagger, what did that remind me of? Sometimes guys, when I'm filming, the way I say things reminds me of like a reference of like something. <laughs> and I get so distracted and I can't, I can't focus again until I get it. Oh, it reminded me of, um, I've got it, I've got it. Duran the Scammer's inflection. The way Duran the Scammer used to speak. If anyone remembers Duran the Scammer, that, that's what that reminded me of. Honestly, truly, I'm here, I'm here. That's, that's like deep, how deep it goes. Lux, Lux is outside, he wants to be with me, hang on. I'm here, baby. He just bought me up a ping pong ball in his mouth because he wants cuddles. How you doing? You say hi? No, not really. Okay. Down you get. Did you get me muddy? He's like the dirtiest cat you ever know in your life. 
Okay, so the dagger um, is a random number generator. So I have the choice when I land on the dagger, do I want to randomly number generate all of my books on my TBR or do I just want to random number generate that genre that the room's in? The super prompts are like weapons aren't constrained by the genre room that they're in like the books are, but they can be if I want them to. It's like the, the general kind of the way those work. So I've decided since it's horror and it's Summerween, it makes sense just to do horror. And I don't have that many horror books. So I feel like there's less chance of us getting something fucking wacky. Okay, oh yeah, we can do it here. Between one and 23, generate seven. Okay, it's gonna be a recent one because I, I sort my shelves by date added. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh wait, we've got to redo it. <laughs> We landed on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but that is for another video, so it can't be that. We can't do that one. Okay, redo it. Generate. 11. Okay, so that's 7. 8, 9, 10, 11. Really? We're going to be reading Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Okay, that's interesting for a readathon. Hang on. Wait, do I own it? I don't actually know if I own it physically. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't own her body and other parties physically, but you know what? I'll get it. I'll buy it. I'm going book shopping in London this weekend, so I'll either buy it in London if I see it, or if not, I'll order it online afterwards. But we'll order that. Okay, let me read you out the Goodreads start because <laughs> I don't own it. It's a series of short stories, demolishes the arbitrary borders between psychological realism and science fiction, comedy and horror, fantasy and fabulism. I've heard such good things about this. I've heard really good things. Earthly and otherworldly, antic, antic and sexy, queer and caustic, comic and deadly serious. It swings from horrific violence to the most exquisite sentiment. Okay, we're gonna be reading this for Summerween. Oh my God. Okay, and because it's um, a short story collection, what we can do is like read it throughout the readathon. Like I can divide it up into like a couple of short stories a day. <gasps> That's so exciting. That well, guess what people? I get excited about small things. That's so exciting. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Oh. Okay, what a good pick. I'm really happy with that one. I've heard such good things about all of uh, Carmen Mira Machado's work. I own In the Dream House and I haven't got to that yet, but we'll get to this one first, I guess. So I'll get my hands on that at some point in London. I know I've seen it before on Gaze the Word. So if I go back to Gaze the Word, I'll probably grab it in there. I've seen it on Word on the Water. I've seen it in many London bookshops. So I don't think we'll struggle to find it. And hopefully I'll get my hands on it this weekend. <laughs> Exciting. Okay, roll number five. Person number one, which is green over there in fantasy. Let's see how we roll. Can we get the rose prompt? Yes, oh my God. One, two, three. And that's the rose prompt, which is I pick a book from my patrons. Right, number five is the rose prompt. Are we ready? I'm not. I'm not. Okay, so the rose prompt, when everyone joins my patron, no matter what tier you are, you get to pick two books off of my uh, physical TBR or my audio books and say, Megan, I want you to read these. And they get put in a pot. Let me get the pot. Here she is. And I pick one out and reread it. Now, sometimes we have to pick multiple times because there's books in here, obviously, that I've now read. But let's see what we get and then we'll see who's picked it. I'm hoping it's something that fits within the vague thriller, mystery, horror category of Summerween. <laughs> okay. Right, I also want to try and not make any fallout. What are you? What are you? The what? The Gilded Wolves? Shit. <laughs> this is Satan's work. Who has picked The Gilded Walls? Okay, Jacqueline has picked it. Anyone else? Just Jacqueline. Well, thanks so much, Jacqueline. <laughs> At this point, it's sabotage because like, why would you guys want me to start more series when I'm really trying hard not to? <laughs> So this is a series I've been, I've owned for a long time and I've kind of been saving. I didn't want to start it yet, but I guess we are. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really want to start this yet. And I don't know when I'm going to be reading this. We'll see. It's set in Paris in 1889. I've heard so many good things about it. I've heard that it's a heist novel. I, I love Paris. I love Victorian settings. Like, I think I should love this. I've heard so many good things about it. It's kind of like a staple now. I feel like you don't see as many people read it now. Like many years ago, you would have seen a lot of people read it. And that's when I got it. And then I've never read it. <laughs> I don't know much about it other than that. A group of friends, heist. Paris, Victorian, that's all I really need to know. Thanks, Jacqueline, Jesus Christ. I wasn't ready to read this yet. This was like next year, maybe. 
I'm starting another fucking series. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay, final roll. Person number four, which is pink over there in horror again. That's good. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a four. What one can I get? Oh, I can just go one, two. That is number eight, which is a 2022 release. Okay, and then my final roll was a horror that is a 2022 release. This is the last month, by the way, that's gonna say a 2022 release. It will switch to 2023. I leave it a little while before I switch it in the year because otherwise, like if it's in January and it's like a 2023 release, it'll be hard to get. So that's why I'm gonna switch it now. Um, I'm stuck. I can't decide. So I'm gonna show you two and I'll read one of them this month, okay? <laughs> so our choices are Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield or What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. I'm stuck between which of these I wanna read during Summerween. This one I know is about wives under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a wife who has gone on a deep sea mission and come back changed and it's I think told from both both of their perspectives or just the other wife's perspective kind of going like what the hell is actually happening to my wife like what the hell is going on I've heard such good things I read the first chapter of this at the start of the year and loved it I thought the writing was claustrophobic it was such an interesting writing style and then I haven't read any T. King Fisher yet and I, I'm gonna start we're gonna read loads of T. King Fisher the rest of this year guys delusion <laughs> convince yourself but this is a 2022 release and I thought it would be good for a readathon because it is so so short it's really short I know this is a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe, one of his stories, like the, isn't it the fall of something, does it say? The fall of the house of Usher, yes, okay, so it's like a retelling of that, and I remember hearing so many good things when people read it. So, it's like one of these, guys, is that okay? I can't decide right now. Maybe I'll read both of them this month, who knows, but I'll definitely read one of them. Let me know actually in the comments which of these you think I should get to for the readathon, because I'm struggling to decide. So if you let me know, then it gives me, it takes the decision out of my hands a bit. So there we have it everyone, that is my July TBR. I'm feeling good about this apart from the Gilded Wolves. I'm not feeling good about that. I'm really not. Jacqueline, thank you, but not thank you. <laughs> So yeah, let me know what you thought of any of these books. Let me know which ones you're most excited to see me read. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling positive. We're going to do this, guys. We're going to live our best lives. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!